Welcome back to the Dirt Head Day Job. I'm gonna give you a little insight on what I'm doing at work every day. Today should be pretty fun. Check this out. Here it is, this is the rig that we're gonna be working on. Late model Bronco, two door, it's already on 35s with bead locks and it's just got sort of a leveling lift on it right now. It's got like spacers for the stock struts, it's got uh, rock crawler control arms on the uppers, or sorry, uh, rough country control arms for uppers. So. It's already lifted, so it's not going to change a whole lot as far as the look goes, but the ride quality should be like night and day. So let's pull this thing in and see what we can make happen. Check it out. I left my GoPro at home. I don't normally film at work, but I figured I'm doing something super cool today. I might as well share it because this is going to be rad. I'm shooting with my iPhone, so it's a little weird, but maybe it's a maybe it's a good thing. Check this out. Falcon branded coilovers front and rear are going to go in this brand new late model Bronco two door. But this is going to be such a rad setup when we're all said and done. BDS lower control arms or BDS rear control arms adjustable and these bad boys here fully adjustable coilovers like i don't know these broncos are rad and the aftermarket has like stepped it up i've heard that these things make these broncos ride absolutely amazing so hopefully we can get these installed and then come back and get a little bit of feedback on how they worked out Six, five, eight, seven, three, quarter. I'm just trying to like figure out or make sure that I know when I'm said and done if I lifted this thing or lowered it or what. That one's like right around eight and an eighth. So it wasn't sitting super level to begin with. Six and seven eighths, eight and an eighth. Curious to see how much droop this thing gets. That's pretty amazing. The I thought this thing was cranked all the way up. It still had four inches of droop. That's pretty rad. That has even more than that. I guess I was wrong. Outside I said these were 35s, but they're 37, 1250, 17. Ditto trail grapplers on Cam C grenade beadlocks. Pretty cool setup. All right, let's get to working on the suspension. I've got the nuts off the strut tower, or the top of the strut, nuts off the bottom. It's still in there super tight. So now it's time to pop the ball joint loose and the tie rod loose so that I can like lean this knuckle out and try and make a little more space. I went ahead and knocked the ball joint loose and this lower tie rod loose. And I totally forgot to turn my camera on at the right time. So apparently shooting with my iPhone doesn't make me any better at camera work. Alright, let's get this nut off of here, and then we can pop the uh, arm and lean that thing out. Step one, take everything apart. You can see here I'm kind of maxed out on my CV joint angle, and the strut is still not coming out. I don't want to keep prying down on it because it's just going to damage the axle shaft or the CB. I think what I might need to do is just use an air hammer and knock those studs out. Okay, those 
gloves are out. That went pretty well. Let's get this one yeah. All right, that's out. All right, before these go in, I want to do at least a little side-by-side -side comparison here and see what we're working with. Here is the stock strut. This is just about an inch and three quarter shock. Um, it should be nitrogen charged or gas, press or gas pressurized. And then this one has a little spacer kit on the top of it. And that's how it got the lift kit, the lift that it had. So pretty basic shock, has a coil over it. So it's, it is a strut or a coil over. The new one here, the Falcon is I think two and a quarter or two and a half body. The body itself is larger, so it holds more oil. And it also has a reservoir on the end that holds an even larger amount of oil. And in this reservoir, it also has adjustability for compression. So it's pretty rad. You've got like three settings here. You got one is soft, two is medium, three is firm. But if you go to the number two setting, then you also have this second dial that's got eight fine-tuned settings inside of that so it's pretty rad uh, it also has bump stuff built into it coil is on it so it's a coil over the other thing that i was kind of worried about where this shock was like and it's shorter than this one and it's still hard to get out it comes with these upper caps and that'll end up going on here and it actually pushes the upper shock eyelet through the shock tower like about an inch so I think we're going to be fine. Probably have to struggle a little bit getting them in, but that's kind of normal. Let me go and start fitting this into the rig. It's pretty cool how all this stuff goes together once you actually like read the instructions. I didn't really, I didn't really know what I was getting into when I came in this morning. A little dab of red Loctite. Never hurt anybody. Okay. Here's the real test, see if we can get this thing in there. Let's see, spacer, forward, label forward, shock out. Up there. Are you kidding me? Freaking rad. like that. Holy cow. I love this. Awesome. All right, I'm going to track down the bolts for those. There it is. The front, I guess, is done. Pretty rad and quick setup. This side went way faster than the other one, partly because I had all my tools out and everything ready to go. All right, on to the back. I'm going through the next step and going to do the shocks and these control arms. I'm going through the instruction manuals and it looks like I've got to take the whole dang old gas tank out in order to get one of the bolts out for the control arms. So I'm going to go up with the truck. I want to make sure it's not somewhere I can just cut the bolt out and then replace a bolt without having to pull this whole gas tank out. There's one there. Let's see what's up with this upper. And it's obviously got a tank right next to it. And it looks like the bolt goes that way. If it's anything like this side. Darn it. No, that's no fun. Take the gas tank out, I guess. Check that out. Old Louis Vuitton's out of the shop. I, uh, I drove it to work today, and we are getting going on the Bronco project some more. So, it's Monday morning, and I'll go in here and show you where I'm at on this thing. I kind of came in and did a little bit of work. I got the gas tank dropped down and kind of making space. I had to be able to get to that link bolt there, and then there's another one over behind that cover. So... Now that the gas tank is dropped down, I've got little caps and plugs on things so that we don't have like uh, 
we don't have like fuel spray and vapors and stuff to deal with so i'm gonna go ahead and start unbolting the link bars and getting those things swapped out wasn't really in a whole bunch of pressure like up and down it was more like because it was being twisted so hard from the like full droop and being brought forward so we'll get that out of the way in a second and then we can start messing with the new shocks as well i think i'll just kind of button up this whole side all in one shot don't tell anybody but i kind of cheated and cut some plastic out of the way Let's see if we can run these out there we go. The ratchet wrenches are, the, are so good, but make sure that you buy flex head ratchet wrenches. Or if you can afford both, you can get both. But if you're going to buy one set of ratchet wrenches, always get the flex head. I got the fixed ones on these blue point ones years ago. And I always wish that I would have bought the flex. I always wish I would have bought the flex ones. coming out. All right, out. Our control arm can come out now. I'm over on the bench getting the new links set up to be the same length as the stock ones. And then I'm going ahead and tightening up jam nuts while it's out here on the bench using the vise to do so. So this one is ready to go back in the rig. These new lower BDSs has, have a bend in them, and that's just to give it a little bit more ground clearance, like so. All right, I'm working through this. I now have both the passenger side links on and the driver upper on. I ended up having to unbolt the exhaust and scoot it out of the way, um, just so that I could get to that bolt up there, which I don't know if, like, this one has a Magnaflow kit on it, I don't know if uh, in stock form if that would be a problem or not. We're getting there. I think all the old parts are off. All right, shocks are out, and I'm over here kind of doing my pre assembly on the rear coilovers. These things are freaking amazing. They come with all these uh, these rock guards, rock chip guards, roost guards, whatever you want to call it. So I'm just kind of getting those dialed in right now. There's a left and a right, and they kind of like orient one way or the other, orientate. Anywho, tightening all this stuff up and getting them ready to go in the rig. these little all this little like detail stuff like rotating the shot guard over so it doesn't hit the control arm it's like already been thought about yeah. okay bolt is in it's not super tight so I'll tighten that up and I'll tighten all these lower the axle side link bars when it's on the ground and got its weight on it because that's what you got to do when you have rubber bushings um, you want to get it to where it's like at ride height or mid travel or whatever and then that's when you go through and you torque all those bolts that way the bushing's not preloaded uh before you set the vehicle on the ground all right we're going for a ride cooper's gonna drive yeah. I'm gonna shotgun. There are some really bad roads around here, so we're gonna go find out how good this suspension is. I'm excited. This thing's gonna be cool. I'm telling you. I know. It's awesome. I don't know if it's actually any higher or lower or not, but it doesn't have spacer box on it, so that makes it cool. I hope they didn't paint it. There's a section of road right here that's typically terribly bad. 
Oh yeah, holy cow. This has broken steering written all over. <laughs> yeah. That's actually not bad at all. Yeah, it's a little harsher than I expected, but I bet you that just means you can drive it hard. Huh. Let's go back and do that a dozen right. times. I've been, it would have been worse than this thing bone stock, I guarantee that much. Yeah, I've, I've avoided this little stretch a dozen times. Oh my gosh, that was like a foot deep. All right. I think it'll handle it. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> We're on the lake bed. All right, uh, you're gonna let you out. Let me out up by the asphalt, and I'll see if I can make something out of this. This section of dirt through here is absolutely terrible. This might not be the best solution for testing your suspension, but it's what we got right now. is awesome oh my gosh i couldn't imagine like with a little bit of tuning and playing around with it it's got to be good i love it i love it all right, that was a quick little suspension upgrade on two-door, I think, six-gen Bronco with the new Falcon coilover kit on it. Four grand bolted on your rig, and the thing handles so good. That's it for this dirt head shed. I'm out of here. is good, it buggies. <laughs>